I'm gonna say. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, were you this end? Oh, nothing. I'm just gonna sit here and continue doing what I'm doing while I talk to you. Okay. No problem. All right. <laughs> cool. Uh, did you have a chance? Have you had a chance to look at uh, your uh, the the equipment's um, Roger? I, I'm it's, it sounds more like half to me. Uh, Roger Hawk. Hawk. Yeah, Hawk. I guess. But it's, it's, yeah. Um, and I also looked up a little bit of, um, hold on, what's his name? John Zhang. Okay, that's the Democrat. It's the Democrat running against Hawk and against me. Yeah. So I did do a little research on both of them. Um, John Zhang is a local guy who has been in a few things here in town. He's got a name, a little bit of a name for himself. Um, Roger Hawk, I'm not seeing anything on the news, on the radio. I'm not seeing much, but basically street signs. Yeah. You know, uh, the people are supporting him. Uh, I, uh, I pulled up his, uh, his voting record through, um, a ballot, uh, like vote ballot or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, it had like, uh, like the first page, I had like four pages, but I haven't had a chance to go through all pages, but yeah. Um, basically, one of the ones that I found interesting was he um, he vo he voted to uh, repeal the uh, the Driver's Responsibility Act. Yeah. And in an interview that he that he posted on YouTube, or someone posted on YouTube, I should say, he basically said that because um, uh, gas uh, gas company workers, uh, truck drivers. Uh, weren't able to get to work because they kept being stopped because they weren't being safe apparently or responsible, whatever the case may be. Right. Um, I looked at the statistics and it seemed like uh, under that law, a lot more people were being, were being responsible because otherwise they would have been stopped and whatnot. Uh, but the key factors for me during the interview was the fact he said those truck drivers who had no driver's licenses, and two, they worked for, for the gas industry. I'm like, okay, well, that just tells me that one of the bigger uh, um, <clears throat> contributors is the gas and oil company. Right. Because a lot of the workers need to get to work. They may not have a, a license, which is illegal in the first place. Right. And under that law, they're stopping a lot of them from actually being able to do their work by uh, uh, driving the gas or something to that effect. So that that's what that told me. I'm like, okay. So he's, I'm guessing he's uh, he's well funded by them in regards to local. Oh, oh I'm sure. Yeah. And, the uh, only thing I know about the guy is that he's been in office for two years now. He got elected in the the year I moved to Mount Pleasant, and I have not seen anything good happen to this town in the last two years. Really? Uh, how much of the how much of the business uh, or uh, how many truck drivers do you think you have in that district? How many what? Truck drivers that are associated with gas, oil, and another uh, industry like that. Oh, I don't think that this district has a lot of that. It's more farming community, more you know homestead community. I mean, yeah, there are the people who have the money and, you know, the support and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of people around this area, you know, they're basically farmers that have been there for years. Mm -hmm. You know, they're college students. This is a college town. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of college students that come in and out. Now, uh, do you, can you tell me uh, just in like the mile radius of, of where you're living at, how many bars and other places like that are there? How many bars? Yeah. Oh, good Lord. Um. Oh uh, God, if I had to count on bars in Mount Pleasant, oh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, probably within the vicinity, I would say 20 bars. I was asking because, I was asking because the law was, the law was to prevent irresponsible driving. Mm -hmm. And if you get too drunk, you become irresponsible. Right. So that also tells me that he may be funded by real estate people that own property out there that have bars uh, as businesses, restaurants, and stuff like that. Right. So uh, when I look at um, the law as an overall one, okay, it seems like it, it's stopping what it's, it's doing its job. 
in regards to stopping the responsible driving. So for him to get that law repealed just makes it less likely for the money to get into the local hands. Right. Well, when it comes to driver responsibility fee and all that, I think that our system needs to do something different. Number one, our insurance needs to be affordable. If it's mandatory, it needs to be affordable. Mm -hmm. Then the people wouldn't get pulled over for doing something reckless or stupid or whatever, and then go to jail because of no insurance, getting their car towed, no insurance. And then it's a vicious cycle. It is. Once you're caught in the system, it's hard to get out. So we as a whole need to figure out affordable insurance and then that would leave the market open for people to be able to maybe afford better cars, which again would turn, help the economy. Yeah. You know, it's a, if we can make things balance out, that's what we all need to do. We need to find a balance from money going out and money coming in. So where people can live and survive and put back into our economy. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at now is nobody has any extra money. They don't, they can't afford car insurance. They can't afford, you know, the prescriptions that aren't covered by Medicare, which I think Medicare is a joke, but you know, I mean, we've got bills we can't pay. We've got costs we can't do and state of Michigan or all states have to realize that. Well, I think the biggest problem of the whole uh, thing with like uh, Medicare part uh, in, in, inside the legislation, and when I looked at that, I was very surprised about this, but not surprised at the same time. It makes it illegal for the government to negotiate with pharmaceutical industry. Yeah. Yeah, so. I just watched a documentary on that. And, you know, we are the only country who does not do that, you know, to lower the cost for people. We, are, we don't take into consideration that people you know, don't have full insurance or they don't have the money to cover these medications that are life-saving medications. And I also think that insurance companies need to start paying for this. They paid for 20 years of opiates. Why not this? It's a healthier choice. Yeah, uh, that would, I think that would require them to pull out military uh, spending uh, yeah. from those countries that, uh, that pay a lot of money for for, mil for the military to protect those opium uh, fields and whatnot. So I don't yeah. think, uh, unless we actually get enough greens, enough socialists, enough alternative uh, people in office, state, mm -hmm. local, federal, none, none of this stuff is going to is going to stop. None of this stuff is going to change. Yeah, that's, and that's the reason why sometimes I'm on a podcast or even on my Facebook Live. I will literally sit there and say what the direct definition of socialism is. So I can get that message across because right. I know that the, the red scare and all that other bullshit. So. You know, when I think about our government and I look at, watch these documentaries on TV and I watch the news and I think back and I'm thinking to myself, what's next because things are so bad and so corrupt and run the wrong way what is going to be left um for you know your kids your grandkids or their kids yeah what's next i don't i'm afraid for the future i honestly am uh, i'm i'm afraid that the dnc and rnc have <clears throat> have effectively uh, done a lot of bad legislation to the point where people fully believe that, um, I hope you don't mind, but I, I've been, um, I have been um, uh, sharing this link oh. earlier on so that Abdul can listen in. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I, I didn't mean to like just pull it, pull it out of my butt on you on that one. <laughs> oh no, you're fine, you're fine. Um, let's see. Well, I, 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 by the way, I, I emailed, I, I tried to text you on Facebook asking for, uh, if, you, if you had it, um, the conversation with like all the Michigan uh, contenders. Yeah. So what I was going to try to do was actually uh, put that uh, shorter version, if there was one, uh, on there and put like a pre-taped pre uh, message by myself 
urging people to look at their their ballots and uh, earlier I did a Facebook where I said if they're not right. on your ballots make sure they are on your ballot because they are the sole that and Socialist Party if they are running anybody are the sole alternative that we need in office not this establishment stuff because they're the yeah. why we're in this in the first place you know, we have been conditioned our entire lives, all of us have, to think that there is two parties that run this country. Yep. That's it. Yep. You know, so people don't even know that there are third party options. You know, even if it's not the Green Party, there are other options besides those two that have been running this country for all these years. And look what it is leading to. Exactly. Yeah. So somewhere or another, we got to get the word out to younger people you know, the, there are other options than just Democrat and Republican. And those other options are better options at this point in time. Yes, I, I, I keep saying there are three viable people, not just party, but people that are running for president. Howie uh, Hawkins and Angela Walker, mm -hmm. uh, Joseph Kishore of the Social Equality Party, and Mark Charles, who is an independent, indigenous, Native American running uh, president as well. And Mark himself, as far as the part goes, is running on trying to fix the foundation of this country, taking out the 13th Amendment, which basically legalizes slavery for the prisoners. Because a lot of prisons became more corporate in the 80s and otherwise, and a lot of their uh, Occupants, if you will, are yeah. uh, minorities. Yeah. And because the, because they are a, a lot of more private corporation, they get a lot more money yeah. from the government to facilitate stays for that. Yeah, my boys went to prison uh, in 2014. They were 17 and 20 years old. 17 and 20 years old. Now, I did not realize anything about the prison system you see all this stuff on tv that you know they're all gangsters in there and they're all bad people they make it look worse than it really is they do but once i delved behind got behind the scene i seen that it is corporate and it is basically a money making machine you know these prisoners that are in there are good people who have made bad choices yeah there are bad, there are bad people out. Don't get me wrong. There are people who deserve to be in prison, but the majority of them are grown up in homes or facilities and they're not being brought up properly like I was or probably like you were, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, unfortunately my ex-husband and myself went down the whole drug road, pill road, and my kids lives took a toll because of that. And so a lot of these people who are in this prison systems is it because of the parenting that they lack. And that's where our prisons, what they need to teach these people are the skills that they need for when they do get released, they can become productive members of society, pay taxes, buy cars, buy homes, and the state would make more money that way than they would as using it as a revolving door. Yeah. And that's exactly right. And uh, it's it's when I look at when I look at say Joe Biden, who basically made his career based off of the crimes bill in the nineties, and yet he brings on Kamala Harris, who I believe in the interview he said that I believe she's willing to take on the responsibility of president on day one. Which tells me he's planning on just trying to get her in office so that he can retire. Uh, and so we can have, quote, unquote, the first female black president. So I'm like, uh, okay, well, you know, I, I don't understand this black, white thing, gay thing, lesbian, you know, if we are people who are qualified to do this job, it shouldn't matter what you look like, who you love, blah, 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 blah. But we need those qualified people who actually care about the earth and the people and the things on it and want to see good changes made. Those are the people we need in office. So if you were, uh, if you were able to get in the office, what would be the first thing you would legislate or vote on or I think- First thing we need and we have to have is we got to have drinkable, clean water. 
That is a must in every state, every city, every town. Somewhere or another, we got to get our waterworks fixed to where people don't have to buy water softeners or they don't have to buy filters or they don't have to buy bottled water, especially. You know, there's so much waste when it comes to water in the bottles that it comes in when it's a natural resource, it's pretty much free, but we need to clean it up. That is a must because if the water isn't clean, the fish that we eat are not clean. You know, we are dying because of Legionnaire's disease. It's, you gotta have clean water to survive. That's a must. And what has, what has the representative there done in that regard or the governor for that matter? Your guess is as good as mine. I'm not sure. Mm. I'm not really sure what they've done here. The only thing I know is not much has really changed in this area in the last two years and more businesses have closed than opened. Yeah, that's probably a huge fact that a lot of jobs and a lot of jobs are either going extinct or overseas or yeah to other, to other states. So, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, uh, are there any other uh, legislation you want you want to see be voted on uh, other than uh, uh, marijuana, um, water, measure for all, uh, fifteen dollars? Well, you got we got to have fair housing some way, shape, or form. We have to have. You know, people need somewhere to live, to survive, to exist. You have to have a roof over your head. We've got too many people that are homeless, too many people that are displaced, too many people that are living in their vehicles. These are working people mm -hmm. who have to survive in their vans, in their cars, in their trucks, because they can't afford housing. You know, you got people on disability, SSI, SSD, that make seven hundred and eighty to twelve hundred dollars a month, and yet your rent's eight hundred. How are you going to survive? You can't. We have to have some kind of fair, equal, affordable housing. You know, lower the rates so the people don't have to get kicked out, so they can afford to stay there. You know, then the companies who own these properties are not spending that money going to court, filing paperwork you know, hiring their maintenance guys to come in, fix the apartment back up, and then the people are homeless. Mm -hmm. You know, if we could lower the rates of housing to where people can afford them, they will stay, the economy will stay the same, then the homelessness will go down. You know, it's kind of a good trickle effect. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do. We've got to reduce the cost of, or up the rate of income. Mm -hmm. You know, one or the other. Mm -hmm. Again, we need balance. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 what's the uh, population there? Uh, there is roughly 19, 20,000 people in Isabella County. I've kind of done a little bit of research on the town. So there's roughly 20,000 people, give or take, you know, because there's students that come and go and yeah. everything. But yeah, there's about that many here. Uh, who's the biggest employer there? The biggest employer here has got to be probably the casino and water park, I would say. Okay, well, uh, do you know the casinos that are actually owned by uh, owned and operated by a native tribe, or is it? Uh, yeah, it is. It's a uh, Saginaw, uh, Saginaw Chippewa um, tribe that owns the land here. Yes. Oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> well, but it's not. It's not that cool though, because honestly, the 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 casino is always looking for workers, and so is the water park. And because it's on federal land, they have to test for THC where other companies can get away with not testing. So a lot of their, they're losing a lot of employees just for that. I went there one time. I met every qualification for a job. Everyone. I passed the typing test. I passed their interviews. I did everything they wanted to hire me. And I told them, I said, I'm not going to be able to work for you. I'm going to drop for THC. One lady says, don't worry about it. Go get it done. We, we want you here. Okay, fine. I go get it done. It comes back. I go to turn in my uh, uh, licensing paperwork and all that. And the other girl looks at me. She says, I'm sorry, we can't hire you. I looked at her. I said, well, why not? She says, because you dropped for THC. And I looked at her. I said, was that the only thing that kept me from getting this job? She says, yeah. So okay. now they probably would have offered it to me if I had had a prescription for Vicodin in my purse. I probably could have got it. But again, it's federal land. 
which is, you know, owned by the Native Americans and it's federally illegal, so they have to, but it, it takes a big dent into their employee, yeah. you know, because yeah. a lot of people are turning to it now for a medicine. Yeah, I'm sorry, it didn't bother me that for a second, so I was like, oh, okay, I understand. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, yeah I thought the, the uh, I thought. Now, I do know that the casino in Traverse City, because they're a sovereign nation and they can do their own bylaws and all that, they made it to where you can have cannabis on their reservation up there. And Mount Pleasant needs to do the same because it would bring in more employees for what they need. Mm. Okay, well, that, yeah, that, that, that is very messed up as far as the park goes. I, yeah, I thought that, uh, that uh, Native, Native American owned properties were, uh, were regulated by, said, by, by the tribe that owned it. Not not federally uh, regulated. Well, it's federal land, yeah, and because the cannabis is still federally illegal, they have to go by those rules. Mm. You know, even though they can bypass it, they can do their own lawmaking and say, okay, we're going to let it be here, like Traverse City did. Mm. They haven't done that yet, and they, I, I'm, I hate to say this, but Native Americans have got a problem when it comes to alcohol. They cannot handle it. They don't have it in them. They're not Irish. <laughs> you know, they're not Russian. They cannot handle alcohol and they have a lot of alcoholics in their tribe. Yeah. And you know, this is another thing that would help that too. I I I, I think that goes back to the whole barter system where it used to be where they would get like a depend on the, the amount of alcohol for whatever other services that were provided uh by, by the tribe. So I think that alcohol opium and all that is yeah so green you know i went on their uh website one time and the, the headline was um opiate problem okay well then allow allow people to have this and they wouldn't need the opiates you can do that you know they can do that but they don't they don't want to yet this town for some reason has got it to where they don't want to allow the recreational cannabis or the tribe doesn't want to allow its people to have it to get healthy. I don't get it. Well, is there any pharmaceutical uh, uh, manufacturers around there or any of that sort? Is there what? Many, uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies around there? Uh, well, we have a methadone clinic here in town. Hmm. Yeah, people yeah. from all over the state of Michigan come here for that which is insurance based so the town really doesn't make any money off of it no but but people who, who open it up are, who are it sounds like a well place. yeah it's to serve the local addicts is what it is to keep them addicted to the opiates but when it comes again to this you can't get this recreationally yeah. in town yeah but th you know that, and yeah. that'll make you money well, that, yeah I'm thinking in, in their heads or the federal the, the, the federal uh, uh, government's head is they get more they get more uh, more money at the op opioid sale. Or, oh yeah, well, uh, you know big pharma takes over. Well, exactly. Yeah, that, and that's what I mean. Uh, I wonder if that place has like um, uh, a little uh, uh, well, pharmacy of sorts. They, they would qualify as said pharmacy in regards to like uh, the uh, the thing you were just talking about. Hold on, you like froze up there for a second. Yeah, so they do actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, whoa! No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you know, it's like there's a um, a debate going on here in Mount Pleasant now. There's two, there are two businesses here already who are medical um, marijuana dispensaries, only medical. Yeah. Okay, so the city council has three licenses that they can give out. And these two businesses have been here for a couple of years now, helping the community. Mm -hmm. All right, so what do they do? They choose two licenses to go to Loom and one to go to House of Fire. And these are corporation, these are big business. These are not mom and pop little stores. Okay, so these, these guys are not gonna be in until next year. So now, this town is losing money on a daily basis because the money who, that could be spent here on recreational is getting spent in Bay City. It's getting spent in Flint. It's getting spent in Edmore, Big Rapids, um, Everett. Mount Pleasant is losing money every single day 
that that city council turned down these two businesses to have their recreational license. And we are the Isabella County is the poorest county in Michigan. Why would you turn down revenue? I don't understand that. Because I don't get it. Because the people who are in making. Uh, but I did find out that with a ballot initiative, and if we were to get enough signatures in this town, we could have that decision overturned. Uh, well, let's see. The, the governor would be able to uh, veto that, right? That I'm not too much sure about. The only thing I know is I had heard that that's an option to get it happening. So I might have to, yeah. you know, yeah. see what yeah, I can yeah. do on that. Yeah, yeah, good thing happening. That sounds like a, yeah. a very much worthwhile cause as far as the part goes. But well, in this town, it's needed. It is. Now, I was asking as far as the, uh, the governor, because if, if she gets lots of money but from uh, campaign contributions from Big Pharma and other places, right. that she's she's going to be more like most likely to veto that. Yeah. So that, that's why I'm like, well, OK, I think a green. Well, then that's the problem we have then with our governing parties. If they're letting these big corporations make their decisions on people's lives, then they shouldn't be in office, really. Exactly. This is why I'm, this is why I, I'm saying we need more cranes to yeah, socialism really. or anti-establishment uh, type of figures going for office and winning them. That's the only way this state, this this country is going to get better is if we get the two party um, heads of turds out of the office. Yeah, yeah. something's got to happen here. Something's got to give because it's not going good. Our, you know, our world is falling and it's collapsing and it's burning and it's underwater. And uh, I mean, it's a mess right now. We got people fighting against over a skin color. Good Lord, end it. Really? <laughs> Yeah, you well, know, we're all the same. We all bleed red. We're just from different parts of the world. That's it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in order to do that, you have to take out the 13th Amendment. That's the only way that it could be uh, a non-issue in regards to policing and just cultural overall. Because you yeah. look at it, it, it does say that, that African Americans are if, uh, are taken away from slavery in the general populace, but not by punishment. So they took that along with the uh, the mindset of, well, we will just keep incarcerating as many minorities as we can because we can actually make a good profit off of that, and that's constitutional. You know what I think is kind of funny but not funny is I'm seeing all these riots on TV and all these Black Lives Matter protests, in which they do matter, don't get me wrong, everybody's life matters. But what I'm thinking to myself is, why is it that us, the European white people, are pushing out the African American black people and the black are fighting back? No, wait a minute, neither one of us were here to begin with. We're fighting over land and space that technically was not ours. The Native Americans who are indigenous to this land were here first. And yet it's us two that are going back and forth. Okay, you belong here, you don't belong here. Guess what? None of us belong here, they do, but we're here. And yet they're in the background just watching us all. Like, go ahead, fight. Y'all are just ruining everything. They already took our land. Go ahead and take what's left. Mm -hmm. You know, we all got to work together. Yeah. We all got to work together for a cause. And the cause yeah. is earth and what's on it because I'm afraid that we're killing it. Yep. And we're killing ourselves for what reason, really? What reason do we have to go out there and tell somebody who is different than you that their life doesn't matter? We have, you no, know? Reason. We have no reason to do that. There's no. no. That's about what we're doing. You know, nobody is more superior than anybody else. It doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter your religion, your, your, your sexual orientation, nothing. We are all humans on this earth. And we all deserve to live a good, safe, healthy life or existence on this planet. And unfortunately, because of the way that we've been run all these years and the things that have changed because of greed and ignorance, you know, we're in a world now where all we know is destruction and chaos. Yeah. That's it. That's what our kids know. You yeah. know, they know hate and fear and destruction and chaos. 
Yeah. You know, might as well just go over and live in Syria, really. That's what it's coming down to in America. Fighting over nothing. Mm. It's senseless, it's pointless, and it's doing nothing but hurting people. It's taking lives. You know, it's causing pain, destroying our towns because of destruction and looting, which is, you know, and I understand people want to make their voices heard and protest. They need to do that. They've been, you know, people have been doing it for years, but that they don't need, they shouldn't have to do that. Yeah. You know, we all should be treated equal no matter what, mm -hmm. period. Yeah. I don't care where you come from, how much money you got. You are no more special than anybody else on this planet, and everybody has the right to live here. Period. Right. Oh, uh, I, I, actually, I haven't asked this question of uh, anybody yet, and Miles will do it to you. Uh, what is your uh, your feelings about uh, people with autism? Pardon? What is your feelings about people with autism? Oh well, number one, I hate labels. Um, you are a person. And, or anybody who has any kind of a uh, difference, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't look at somebody who, you know, has ADD or autism or Asperger's or any different than I would look at somebody who's got MS, ALS, or who's short or tall, black hair, blonde hair, albino, dark skinned. We are who we are and we're born with what we're born with. Mm -hmm. And people have to accept people for you know, disabilities or whatever they may be called or whatever they are. And we got to learn to live with it, period. You're no different than I am. That's always good. Maybe, maybe you want to be, though. No, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, uh, I think I, I asked you uh, last time we talked, uh, uh, have you gotten any additional help from the Green Party at large? Um, not per se. I mean, I've had people reaching out to me to help me, you know, more emotionally, I guess you can do this. You got this. I got your back kind of thing. But financially, I have had two donations, one for $20 and one for $10. Mm -hmm. And the rest is on me. Uh, what, where can people go to, to donate to you? Uh, my email address is melissa for michigan that's melissa f o r michigan at hotmail.com and my uh i have a paypal account and that would be paypal dot me backslash melissa for michigan okay uh now you're on twitter or not i am not on twitter I, I, I was on Twitter one time a couple of years ago. I don't like Twitter, but I'm not going to get on it unless I absolutely have to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am on Instagram, um, Mel for Mish on Instagram. Uh, and of course, I'm on Facebook on Melissa Noel Lambert. And then I do have a Facebook page with my 99 district stuff on there hmm. with pictures and posts. That's pretty good again. And that's as far, as far as I've got. Ah, okay. All right. Well, that's good so far, as far as that part goes. Uh, what I will do is um, uh, we email me uh, the uh, links to your PayPal and all that, and I'll put it in the tag part of when I upload this. Okay. And then what I'll do is uh, when I put out now, because because basically my podcast, I usually upload the interview that I just put up on YouTube also on there, so that that way I don't do double yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I will put that also in the, uh, in the in the tagline too. So okay, and you know me, I share the crap out of everything. I got in trouble. Yeah, that'd be great. You know, any help would be any help would be wonderful. Uh, so uh, those two donations have they come from Michigan or outside? Oh no, they were from a couple friends. That's all. Just okay. people, just regular people. I don't Nobody. To, don't donate to Melissa. She, she's uh, she's worth the vote and the money. Hey, well. I would. I, I hope so. I'd hate to get in there and disappoint people, though. The the people we have in there aren't exactly as spectacular, so. Yeah, this is true. I think that this is true. The first step. I remember the day that I heard our president get on TV and tell me that there was no global warming. I'm like, what is wrong with this guy? And he's running this land. He's if he can do the job, I can do the job. Basically, yeah. 
<laughs> <laughs> a monkey could do it. Yeah, we have a monkey in there right now, uh, after the ring of pain, uh, as Bill Maher once called him. True that. Well, uh, yeah, I, something. Uh, I, I thank you for being on. Uh, oh, anytime, anytime. Uh, vote for this woman. Uh, volunteer for her if, if she needs it. Uh, do anything you can for for for, uh, for Melissa here. Uh, she definitely deserves a vote. Definitely deserves the uh, donations, and she'll do a great job in office. And I guess. Well, thank you. Say, that was awful nice of you. I get well. Thank you. I, I guess you could say I, I can officially endorse her, and I don't know how much that will actually help, but I hope it helps a little bit. Okay, and I guess I have ten minutes left, so <laughs> I will. Uh, I will let you go uh, for the day. Uh, I think okay. Well, it was nice seeing you again. You take care and stay safe, and you, you know, good luck with your fiance's family out there. I hope every everybody is okay out there and makes. I got family out west too, and I worry about them. Yeah. So, and I got my I got family in Florida with the hurricane coming in. So. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I Everything's all sorts of messed up right now. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, next. All right. Well, you stay safe, and uh, I'll send you those emails with my uh, my link so you can put it on here. Okay. Have a day. All right. You too. Talk to you later. All right. Bye bye. Stay safe. You too.